Welcome to the GT350 Garage. My name is Walter and in this video we're going to press some axle bearings. Not for my Shelby but for uh, Alex here in northern Utah. He's, he's a college student and he's got a 65 Mustang Coupe. It's a A-code four-barrel car. Really nice car. And uh, I'll drop a, a link to his uh, uh, his car's Instagram if you'd like to give him a follow on Instagram um, in the description below. Uh, but uh, Alex had converted the car to disc brakes in the rear previously and the disc brake kit, what he found when he started driving the car was that the parking brake was kind of woefully inadequate for the, the terrain we have here. We have a lot of hills. Um, you know, lots of slopes. The, you need a parking brake that works, especially on a four-speed car. And as a result, we we discussed his options back and forth and uh, looked at different ways we could maybe try and improve what he had, looked at different options, including going back to drum brakes. Ultimately, he settled on taking the leap into Will Wood's integrated drum brake inside their rear disc brake conversion. And it's a very nice kit, but it requires removing the axle retaining plates. And that opened up a discussion about whether or not those bearings had ever been serviced since he purchased the car. He wasn't sure. So when he got the axles out of the car, uh, the seals were actually leaking a little bit and the bearings were in pretty bad shape. So this was a service that was, was actually kind of overdue and uh, couldn't have been a better time to actually address this. Uh, what you're going to see is the process that, that we used to um, take the old axle bearings off, clean up the axles, prepare them for the new bearings, and install the new bearings. When we do this, we're going to be using a 20-ton hydraulic press. Now, this is not something that everybody has in their garage, obviously. So, if you are borrowing a press to do your own axle bearings, I, I want to just give one word of caution. You're dealing with potential energy when you're dealing with a, a hydraulic press. Stored energy, captured energy, energy that is is basically being imparted onto a part to try and move parts together or move parts apart. Um, and that can be quite a bit of energy and it can be a little bit intimidating. Uh, the first time you hear an axle bearing move and it, it makes quite a, an interesting ping in the, uh, the press assembly, it can be kind of unnerving after you've done it a couple thousand times it's no big deal but it, it can actually it, it can actually kind of startle you and if you're holding on to the parts and things aren't set up properly you could actually you know potentially pull the parts out and release all of that captured energy and hurt yourself so i just want to warn you that if this is not something that you're comfortable with or if it's not something you're familiar with do a little bit of research, um, download some instructions on how to use the press that you're, you're going to try and use. Make sure you use proper safety equipment, safety glasses. Uh, Hard-toed shoes aren't a bad idea when you're pressing things. Maybe not entirely necessary, but uh, also don't stand in the line of fire. So if those parts can come flying straight out of that, that press, don't stand right in front of the press when you're doing the press assembly. Stand kind of off to the side when you're operating the press. If you haven't already, subscribe. Um, still, like 85% of the people that watch my videos aren't subscribers. Um, hit that subscribe button and I'll keep sharing this kind of information, different stuff that uh, can be helpful and I'll show you the easiest way I know how to do things, the safest way I know how to do things, so that uh, you can successfully work on your own project and um, you know get to enjoy it because you didn't get hurt along the way. If you like the videos, 
hit that thumbs up. Um, if you have any questions or comments, leave them in the comment section below, or you can reach out to me on Instagram um, or Facebook or by email. The information's in the description. Uh, so with that, let's get to pressing some axle bearings. Okay, so we're removing the axle bearings to replace them because they're in pretty bad shape. Um, we also need to remove the axle retaining plates because this car is getting converted to Willwood disc brakes with an integral drum uh, parking brake assembly and these get in the way. Um, this particular set of bearings has failed pretty bad. It's got the retaining ring for the front of the bearing has popped out. So we're going to take these things off and to do that we're going to drill and then chisel the press rings so that we don't have to fight the bearing to get the bearing off. I do have a 20 ton press here which makes the job go a whole lot easier but even with a 20 ton press it can be a challenge to get both pieces pressed off simultaneously and if we relieve the stress of the press ring it makes the entire press a whole lot easier to deal with. So I've got a sharp drill bit, I've got safety glasses, and um, I've got a hammer and chisel so we can knock these rings off. And let's give this a go. And you basically want to drill straight down into the press ring. They're hardened steel, so a little bit of lubrication probably would go a long way. And we don't have to drill all the way down. We only have to go about two thirds of the way. And once we've gone that far, the chisel will split it and then it should slide right off. bit further and this will be done. Don't hit your hand. It's generally a good idea to use a chisel holder, but uh, if you don't have one, don't hit your hand.
I've seen these press rings give a 50 ton press a run for their money. Really? Yeah. Okay, that one's off. Don't throw this part away yet because you're gonna need it to press the new bearings back on. Get our second axle. And do the same thing. Okay, so we're gonna press the bearing and we should get a pretty significant pop and then the bearing will slide off the axle with relative ease after that. You're gonna feel the press tighten up and then it's gonna give you that crisp snap. That's the one. Okay, and in order to be able to make this press work, we're gonna have to put some spacers underneath because this axle still has wheel studs in it. So I've got a couple of pieces of metal here that I can put underneath it. I'll have to release the tension on the axle. Give ourselves enough room for the spacers. Do a quick reset so that it's not binding on anything. And this is the final removal of the axle bearing. All right, that's it. That's the axle bearings are off. Okay, so we're gonna clean the axle up. The first step is just to wipe it down and get the grease off of the, the bearing surface area and the seal area. And you can see where this bearing is, has lost some grease on the inside, so a little carburetor cleaner on a rag and it'll wipe, wipe down. Then we'll take a look at the seal area and uh, if need be, we'll polish it with a little emery tape. Okay, there's no lip, but we'll clean that up really quick. So you don't want to necessarily use new emery cloth for this, used is fine. We're not looking to remove any material. We're just cleaning and polishing the surface a little bit. And uh, one of the tricks that you can use is to control the axle with your foot. A longer piece of emery tape makes it a little bit easier. You don't have to get down on your hands and knees. Put your foot on the axle. And we've cleaned it up. Our seal is going to ride right here. There is a tiny mark where this seal is that still remains. You can't feel it with your thumb or your thumbnail. So it's going to be fine as far as once the new seal goes on. Uh, you'll want to grease the seal with just a little bit of axle wheel bearing grease. And that'll make it so that the, the seal doesn't burn and it can't leak into the new bearing. It's time to press the bearings on and you're gonna put your bearing all the way down 
And earlier I recommended save one of the damaged press rings. You can use this as a spacer for pressing the bearing. Um, just make sure that if you have any kind of sharp edges from the drilling and chiseling process, you get rid of those so that you don't damage the new bearings. Go ahead and slide it on. Set up in your press plates. And you're gonna need something like a socket as a spacer on most presses. Use a good size socket. And the new bearing is gonna press on fairly easily. Uh, we're not gonna have any pinging noises on these because we've cleaned the axle shaft and it's, it's a nice smooth machined finish. So this is gonna slide together nice and easy. Um, it's supposed to be a press fit. If you're absolutely concerned, a thin film of grease is fine, but it shouldn't be necessary for this procedure. So we're just gonna start pressing it on. Those are normal sounds. And if you've noticed that we didn't put the axle retainer plate on, it's because these axles are being used with a disc brake conversion. So the conversion includes a new retainer plate and requires the removal of the original factory style retainer. And that's it. It's on. Once you feel re reasonable resistance on your on your press handle, stop because anything more than that, you're just going to bend the press. You're not you're not actually gaining anything by pressing it on any tighter. And don't use a chrome socket for that. Make sure you use an impact socket. Chrome socket will break under the, the stress. So remember, that's gonna slip right off. You wanna put your new slip ring on. Again, you're gonna use the old slip ring and you can see that it's, it's only gotta go on about a quarter of an inch. Center everything up. There you have it. One nice smooth operation. Pressing the bearing on goes on pretty straightforward. You're dealing with potentially during disassembly and assembly, uh, a lot of captured energy. So you wanna make sure you wear your safety glasses and you definitely wanna make sure you keep your hands clear of anything in the press area and don't stand directly in the line of fire if it's something that might shatter or come apart. Um, just some basic press safety protocols. So that's it. The uh, bearing press procedure is done. Okay, on the longer axle to be able to fit it in the press, we had to take the studs out. So now we got to put the studs back in. And with the press, it's a really easy job. Just slide your press plates over. Set your axle on the press plate. 
take your deep socket, get everything lined up. You'll want to reach underneath the press and just hold the axle so that the socket's straight. Once you have tension on it, you don't have to hold it anymore. Just like if anything else with the press, as soon as you feel pretty solid resistance on the, the hydraulic jack, you're done. So we'll do this a couple more times and then this axle will be ready to install. Okay, so that puts the studs back in this axle and now both of the axles are completed and ready for reinstallation. Okay, so pressing the axle bearings is a pretty straightforward process. It really doesn't take all that much time. Um, if you have to take the wheel studs out, use the press and press them back in. Um, again, like I said when we were doing some of these press procedures, once you feel the, the handle on the press kind of stop, you're done. Uh, there's no reason to keep cranking on it and try and force it. You're, you're not going to make things tighter. Uh, once you push a bearing up against a shoulder on an axle shaft, it's not going any further. Once you press the press ring up against the bearing that's up against that shoulder, it's not going any further. So there's no reason to try and kill the parts that you're working on because if anything, you risk bending things more than, than you are going to make it tighter. Um, there should be no reason to need to use heat for this process. You shouldn't need a torch to get the bearings off. You shouldn't need a torch to heat anything to get the bearings on. There's, there's no, this is a no heat process. Um, I've seen guys use torches to expand the press rings to try and get the press rings to go on easier. Don't do it. It's not necessary. Polish the axle shaft and make sure that everything is square and in line when you go to press it together and it'll go on smoothly. It does not need to have grease on it. It will press together just fine if it's clean and smooth and polished. Um, and uh, with that, I thank you for watching. Um, I hope this is helpful and uh, gives you a little insight into how to, how to tackle this job yourself. Uh, if you have any questions at this point, comment below. I'm happy to answer them. Um, if you like the video, give a thumbs up. And one more time, subscribe. Um, stay safe out there and I will see you in the next video.